There are lots of search engines to choose from. Some of these are very specialised. Some promise safe surfing for children. Some claim not to record your browsing behaviour. And some claim to possess a degree of artificial intelligence. But they all do the same job. According to the Oxford English Dictionary, a search engine is a programme that searches for and identifies items in a database. A couple of PhD students called Larry Page and Sergey Brin, working from a rented garage near Stanford University, created what was to become the most popular search engine in the world, namely Google. If you create a new website and you want Google to know about it, first you have to tell Google that your website exists so that Google can record information about it in a database. Google will then use a program called a spider or web crawler to examine each page of your website. It will look in the head section for meta tags that contain keywords and descriptions. It will inspect the content of each page to see if the keywords are relevant. It will check the title of the page and the domain name for relevancy. And perhaps most importantly, it will look for links to other pages within and outside of your website. What sets Google aside from other search engines is one of the methods it uses to determine which pages to show at the top of its list when someone does a search. This method is known as the PageRank algorithm. The PageRank algorithm rates every web page that Google knows about on a scale of 0 to 10. When someone does a search, web pages with a high page rank will be presented near the top of the results list, and those with a low page rank will appear near the bottom. A page rank of 3 is considered to be pretty good. There are very few web pages that have a page rank of 10. Some of these include the home pages of USA.gov and Twitter.com and the Adobe Reader download page. So how does page rank work? Imagine we have a World Wide Web that consists of only four pages. Page A has inbound links from B and C. Page B has an inbound link from page A. Page C has inbound links from B and D. And page D has no inbound links at all. The page rank of a web page is calculated on the basis of its inbound links. That is, the other web pages that link to it. A link from another web page is like a vote of confidence in a popularity contest. So here, you might be tempted to say that web pages A and C are equally popular, because they both have two incoming links. But some inbound links count for more than others. A link from a web page with a high page rank counts for more than a link from a web page with a low page rank. So here, a link from D isn't worth as much as a link from C, because nothing else is linking to D. Page C is a more reputable source than page D, so you could say that page C's is a better quality vote. But it doesn't stop there. An inbound link from a page with, say, 10 outbound links is worth less than it would be if that page had only two or three outbound links. Some people talk about the flow of link juice. The more high quality incoming links that a page has, the more link juice it has to pass on. But this link juice must then be shared out among the pages that it links to. So here we see that page A has a lot of link juice. It has two inbound links. But there's only one link going out from A, and that's to B. So B is getting all of A's link juice. C has also got two inbound links, but it's only getting half of B's juice, and all of D's for what it's worth. Where does it all end? Let's put this into a formula. But first, let's simplify our diagram. The World Wide Web and all of the links between the pages can be represented by a directed graph. We can say that the page rank of A is the page rank of B divided by the number of links going out from page B. 
In other words, page A's share of page B's page rank. Plus the page rank of page C, divided by the number of links going out from page C. That is, page A's share of page C's page rank, in this case, all of it. Page B's page rank is the page rank of A divided by 1 this time, because A has only got one outgoing link. Page C's page rank is the page rank of B divided by 2, because B has got two outgoing links, plus the page rank of D, in this case, divided by 1. As for the page rank of D, well, there's no inbound links. There's nothing to calculate yet. So a simplified view of the algorithm says that the page rank of any particular page can be calculated by summing up a share of each of the page ranks of the pages that link to it. What we have here now is very close to the formula that Larry Page and Sergey Brin came up with. They imagined a random surfer that chose any web page, for no particular reason at all, clicking link after link, randomly, but never hitting the back button. Web pages that were linked to by many others, or web pages that were linked to by just a few other important ones, would be visited more often by the random surfer, which meant that they were more important. So this formula is calculating the probability that a random surfer will land on a page by accident. Symbolically, we could say the page rank of A is the page rank of T1, where T1 is the first page that links to it, divided by the count of the outgoing links of T1, plus the page rank of T2, divided by the number of outgoing links of T2, etc, etc. And we can shorten the formula to this, where n is the number of pages linking to A. But Larry Page and Sergey Brin recognised that the random surfer might get bored following a chain of links between pages, and would eventually decide to start all over again from a completely different random page. To cater for this, they added a damping factor to the formula. The damping factor, d, is the probability at each page that a random surfer will get bored and request another random page. The value recommended for the damping factor d is 0.85. This inherently assumes that the random surfer will get bored after following about six successive links. Now let's apply our page rank formula to our imaginary World Wide Web. The page rank of A is the page rank of B divided by 2 plus the page rank of C divided by 1 multiplied by the damping factor. Now we don't know anything about the page ranks of B and C yet, so we're just going to assume that they are both 1. We're making a heuristic guess. When we do the maths, we find that the page rank of A is 1.425. Now we can calculate the page rank of B, but this time we know the page rank of A, so we can put that into the formula. And when we do the sums, B has a page rank of 1.361, a little bit less than A. To calculate the page rank of C, this time we know the page rank of B, but we don't know the page rank of D, so we're going to assume it's 1. Do the sums, and C has a page rank of 1.579, the highest so far. And finally, to calculate the page rank of D, well, there are no pages linking to it, so we're just going to call this 0. And when we do the maths, D has a page rank of 0.15. So at the moment, C is looking like the most popular page. But these page ranks were calculated on the basis of some guesswork. We're now in a position to plug these values back into the formula and recalculate all of the page ranks. When we do, we get better estimates. And we can do it again to get an even better picture. And again, and again. Every time we repeat the calculations, we get closer and closer to what these page ranks actually are. Eventually, they begin to settle. With our four-page World Wide Web, 
it takes about 20 iterations to get some sort of equilibrium. You can imagine the real World Wide Web will require millions of iterations, but that's what Google's PageRank does. So, finally, we can see that page A has come out on top. Let's summarise by asking the question, if you were to build a website, what could you do to boost the ranking of its pages? What could you do to get nearer to the top of the list of results when someone does a search in Google? Creating links from your own high-ranking websites can help if you have some. You could write guest articles for other websites and post comments on blogs and forums to attract incoming links. If you have content on YouTube, for example, you could place backlinks here too. Websites hosted by providers like WordPress are already very popular, so contributing to these can help to increase your own site's popularity. In fact, a good web hosting service provider of your own will take steps to boost your page rank. Ultimately, though, high-quality content will attract more inbound links from high-ranking sites. If you want to be noticed, content is still very much the king.